Greetings everyone and welcome to our Gamasaurus guide to play Warhammer 40k for the absolute beginner. If you've seen the buzz around the new edition of 40k or have always looked at these miniatures and wondered just how the heck do people play with these, you're in luck because today's video is specially for you. So grab your bolt gun, strap on your power armor and yell the Emperor, the Emperor protects. protects because we're learning 40k today. Now the basics. You only need a few things to start playing 40k. So grab a friend, grab some dice, a tape measure, some miniatures and the data sheets. And you're good to go. For today, we'll be keeping it pretty simple. So you'll be playing as the space movies, the ultramarines, fielding a unit of 5 assault intercessors, and I'll be playing the necrons, with 10 necron warriors. Yes, you are outnumbered, but I'm the one here who's outmatched. Today's objectives are simple. Your dudes will try to kill my dudes, and my dudes will try to kill yours. Now, let's roll off to see who goes first. Wow, look at that, that totally was not rigged, so you'll go first. Now, here is the structure of a turn. It's made up of a few different phases, some of which we will be conveniently ignoring for today. First of all, the command phase. A bunch of things happen here, but like I said, uh, we'll ignore it for now. Second of all, the movement phase, which is pretty self-explanatory. You move your guys around. This is followed by the psychic phase, but only nerds use psychic powers. So we'll skip that too. Now on to the meaty bits. The shooting phase, where you shoot stuff. The charge phase, where you move again, but only into your enemies, not anywhere else. The fight phase, where you fight. And lastly, the morale phase, where you run away in fear. Now before we start proper, we need to know what our units are capable of. For that, let's take a look at our unit's data sheets. Now looking at your data sheet, you might be thinking, wow, that is a lot of information. Well, yes, yes it is. But fear not, I'll be guiding you through it. And we'll also conveniently ignore everything that we won't be using for today. Ah, that's much better. Alright, for the movement phase, we're mostly interested in this number over here. The M stands for the move characteristic. And yes, we'll be measuring distance in inches. So your assault intercessors have a move characteristic of 6 inches so each model in the unit can move a maximum of 6 inches. Also, as a unit, they have to remain in unit coherency. You can see the sidebar for details, but basically, they have to stick close together. Now, let's move them to a more advantageous position. Inside these ruins look fine. Also note, there are a bunch of cool rules about terrain features, but we'll skip over that for now. Once we're done moving our models, it's time to lay down some firepower. Our assault intercessors are each armed with a heavy bolt pistol. Now let's take a look at the weapon profile for the heavy bolt pistol. The range for the heavy bolt pistol is 18 inches. Now let's check if we're in range, and we definitely are. Now the type of weapon is pistol 1. There are several different types of ranged weapons, but we'll go into detail on that at a later time. Right now, we will focus on the 1 which means each model can fire one shot. With that in mind, let's take a shot with each of our assault intercessors, a total of 5 shots. Now, we come to the most meaty, mathy parts, making attacks. Now, the first number we need to look at is here, the BS, or Ballistic Skill. They've got a Ballistic Skill of 3+, plus, so that means each of them needs to roll a 3 or higher in order for the shots to hit the target. Ah, that's a pretty good roll. So, 4 of these dice have rolled at least a 3, so there are 4 hits. Now, we need to roll for each of these to see if they wound the target. To do so, we need to compare the strength of the weapon with the toughness of the target. We see that the heavy bolt pistol has a strength of 4, and the Necron warriors each have a toughness of 4. They're evenly matched. Next, we consult this table which has been memorized by most 40k players by now. So basically, the higher the toughness of a target is compared to the strength of a weapon, 
the harder it is to wound and the, the higher a number you need to roll. So in this case, they are evenly matched. So we need to roll a 4 or higher to wound. Now let's roll. Alright, that's an average roll. So two of these hits successfully wound the target. Now the Necron Warriors are not down yet. They have a chance to save themselves. They've got some tough armor and this is reflected by the save value. A SV of 4 plus. For each wound, they roll a die and if they get at least a 4, they save themselves from damage. However, our intercessor's heavy bolt pistols have some armor-piercing capabilities shown by the AP in the weapon profile. This minus 1 means you subtract 1 from each die roll made to save. So actually, the Necron Warriors need to roll a 5 or higher, which is pretty tough to do. Nice, that's one successful save, so only one, man one wound manages to go through. A model of the defender's choice then takes damage. How much damage? We look at the D on the Heavy Bolter Pistol Weapon Profile. This is how much damage each successful attack makes, just one. Now each Necron Warrior model has only one wound shown by the W here on the data sheet, so it's then destroyed and removed from the battlefield. And that's how to resolve attacks in 40k. Nothing too complex, right? Alright, now would be a good time to review what we learned in the shooting phase about making attacks. So. After declaring attacks, you roll to hit, you roll to see if those hits wound, and then your opponent rolls to see if they save themselves. So you roll to hit, you roll to wound, your opponent rolls to save. Now we'll be going through this a couple more times throughout this video, so you do well to remember it. Alright, now if you thought that volley of pistol fire was kind of underwhelming, that's because these Assault Intercessors are more geared towards close range combat and that's just what they're about to do as you move into the charge phase. Now the charge phase is pretty simple. It's a chance for your unit to close the gap and get in up close and personal. First of all, declare which units you wish to charge with and who they're charging into. Secondly, measure the distance between the closest models. Thirdly, roll 2d6. And if the result is equal to or more than the distance, the charge is successful. Now our intercessors have charged in and it's time for the fight phase. And because they've made a successful charge, they get to attack first. Now we don't have to care about range anymore because they're all in melee range. So let's start hammering away. For the fight phase, we have to look at the attacks characteristic of the intercessors. Each of the regular ones have two attacks, and our sergeant has three, so that's a total of 11 attacks. For the most part, we will resolve these attacks the same way as we did in the shooting phase. Now let's roll to hit. This time, we look at the weapon skill, or WS. It's a 3 plus, so for each roll of 3 or higher, it's a hit. Nice. Now let's compare the strength of the Astartes Chainsword with the toughness of the unit being attacked. The strength attribute in the weapon profile of the chainsaw says user, so that means we refer to the strength of the intercessors, which is a 4. Compare this to the toughness of 4 of the Necron Warriors, and it's a 4 plus to move. Alright, let's roll to move, and that's a good roll. Now, like before, the Necron Warriors have a chance to save themselves from the wound. The save is a 4 plus. And with the minus 1 AP from the Astartes Chainsword, the Warriors have to each roll a 5 or higher to save themselves. Now, that's 1 damage each. So, 6 Necrons with 1 wound each go down. And now, it's time for the Necrons to fight back. Although they don't have a melee weapon equipped, they are still able to make melee attacks using the following weapon. This is them scrambling with their claws, uh, their fists, and making melee attacks with their boss troopers. Now, with that in mind, let's make some attacks using the Necrons. They've each got one attack, so we'll roll one die for each of them, hitting on the 3 or higher, because the weapon skill is 2 plus. And once hit, we'll roll to wound. We use the user strength, which is a 4, and compare it to the toughness of the intercessors, which is a 4 as well. They're evenly matched, so we need a 4 or higher to wound. Alright, some wounds do go through, and let's see if the intercessors can save themselves. We need to roll a 3 or higher, as the save characteristic is 3+, plus, 
and there isn't any armor piercing for the close combat weapon. Aha, only one damage goes through. Now each of our intercessors have got two wounds. So let's mark one damage of one of them using this die. So he's injured but still standing. So that brings us to the end of the fight phase. After the fight phase is the morale phase, where we see if any of our Necrons run away in fear. Fortunately for them, they have got literal nerves of steel. Like literally. Their leadership attribute, LD, is a 10. To take a morale test, we roll a die for the unit and add to that result the number of models from the unit that were destroyed this turn. If the total exceeds the leadership attribute, one model runs away in fear and is considered to be destroyed. Since 7 Necrons have been destroyed this turn, if you roll a 4 or higher, then one Necron model will run away. Let's see what happens. Oof. Bad luck for the Necron warriors, so one model runs away. Now, if a model does run away, we make another test called the Combat Nutrition Test. To make a combat attrition test, we'll roll a die for each of our models left in the unit. For each result, 1, an additional model runs away. Additionally, if the unit is below half strength, the model runs away on a 1 or a 2. Now let's see how these warriors hold up. And okay, it's a really bad day for them. So they failed the morale test and both of the models have failed the combat attrition test. Now for the intercessors, none of them were destroyed so they don't have to take morale tests. And with that, we've reached the end of the turn. Now we hope that was simple and concise enough for all of you to get a glimpse into how Warhammer 40k is played. If you're thinking, that's it, just run up, shoot, charge in, smash and have the bad guys run away, that's all this is about? Now that's where you're wrong. You are so very wrong. In a future video, we'll touch on a few more complex rules. Different types of ranged weapons, unit abilities, the psychic phase, stratagems, command points, terrain features, etc. etc. But till then, stay safe and see you at the store. This is Gerard of Gamosaurus Rex, signing out.